Welcome to the Engineerable channel. In this video, I'm going to show how to completely disassemble and service the Metmo driver screwdriver. Metmo actually includes two tools that are used to completely take apart the screwdriver. The only other thing you'll need is a punch and a hammer to push this pin out. And that's it. You can get to everything in the screwdriver to take it apart and service it. It's pretty cool. Keep watching to see the full disassembly and reassembly of the screwdriver. I love that they included some tools to take it apart. Let's see what happens when you remove this set screw right here. Uh, like I said, the set screw wasn't even really that tight. So I suspect that when I remove this, yes, the handle comes off. That set screw holds the handle on. Whoa, the whole thing comes apart. Check it out. Let's see what it's like to take it apart. Okay, okay. So this is interesting. There are holes in here, which the only thing I can think about is maybe those holes are used to balance the driver because there's a cutout over here, but there's still this stuff here. So let's take this down here. Okay, so this handle actually rotates on a bushing. So the screw is tightening the bushing down. The screw is not tightening the handle down directly. So the screw is not going to directly affect the tightness of the handle. The handle tension is kept tight because it's not closed all the way. It's opened a little bit. So when you tighten that screw, it's this spring tension is what kind of keeps the handle from just flopping around. It's what gives the handle some tightness. So it doesn't really matter how tight you tighten this screw here, all it's doing is pressing on this bushing and the bushing has plenty of space for the handle such that this still spins freely. So there's these two security torque screws and each one has its bushing. So it looks like this brass sleeve here was pressed on so that's not coming off. That brass sleeve makes this motion smooth right here. It kind of acts as a bearing. And what happens if I take this back of the handle off? There's also this rubber washer in the back of the handle here to stop the bits from hitting the metal. So it reduces the noise of the bits moving around the handle. And I noticed they also put a rubber washer in here. This rubber washer is glued in, so I'm not going to force that out. This ratchet pawl is also removable. You take this little screw off. That comes off, and then the ratchet paw comes out, and then there's a spring in here. Looks like they drilled out six holes in here. I guess that's where the bullets go. These are probably just weight reduction holes, and they didn't drill any here because there's a pin that passes through here. Although, I don't think that would have reduced the strength of this pin connection. So this pin passes through here, and pins the shaft in place. So I would have to press this pin out to remove it. Now if we look down in the hex hole, I'm noticing that the magnet has some cracks in the surface. I don't know if the magnet itself is cracked when it was pressed in place, glued in place, or if that's just cracks in the surface coating. But I do know that neodymium and rare earth magnets rely on their coating on the outside to protect them from oxidizing once that coating wears off, the magnet just goes to hell. So I'm a little worried about that, but maybe a little bit of super glue to coat that would protect the magnet. It was pretty easy to knock this pin out with a punch and a hammer because the pin is a little bit wider on one side than the other. So it's really just held in on one end. If I go to put it in, it's wider here but it goes in easily in this length. The pin was punched in two areas to make it hold and grab, and it's a little bit wider up here. So after the pin was pulled out and then the shaft was pulled out, the magnet was accessible from the rear. So I was able to push the magnet out, just pushing lightly, but as I suspected, the magnet was cracked already and it broke into a bunch of tiny pieces. And so I'll have to find a replacement magnet for this. But 
that's really cool that every single thing in here is easily serviceable. I mean, it didn't, didn't, didn't take too much strength to punch that out. So you should note that there is a washer between the hex area and the magnet. So this washer is supposed to contain the magnet and protect it, but it doesn't really protect the magnet against getting hit by the center of like a Phillips bit. So they might need to look into something else there, maybe a aluminum washer or something on the surface there to protect the magnet a little bit better. I'm gonna see if I have any magnets that can work in here because, because I don't think I can get all these little magnetic bits back in there, at least not in the shape of a single magnet. So here's the magnet that I replaced it with down in there. I found a magnet that was, it was square, but close enough to the original magnet and fit inside of here. Here you can see the magnet with the washer, spacer. I had to kind of grind the edges of the magnet down a little bit so it fit inside the round area. So now that we've disassembled this driver as far as it will go, it's time to put it all back together. To put this back together, easiest way is to put it back in the, put it in the vise. Got some aluminum jaws to help protect it. Put this back in here. Take the narrow side of the pin, slide it back in, and then I'm gonna use the vise to squeeze it. There we go, it's back together. This ball detent on the cap looks like it's pressed in, so there's no way to easily remove that without pressing it out. Not gonna bother with that. Then I'm gonna put the spring back in this hole. And then I'm gonna put the detent latch back on and screw the little handle back in the detent latch. This handle could be screwed in either way, so you could kind of change the feeling of it depending on what you like. Now we're going to slide this part back onto the shaft. Make sure that works. I'm going to put the rubber washer back in the bottom of the handle. Slide this on the shaft. Tighten up that set screw. Make sure it still spins okay. I'm going to reattach the torque handle onto the body. So take the screw with the bushing, put it through the torque handle hole. Screw that in. Do the same thing on the other side. You have to squeeze the handle a little bit. and then screw the cap back on the back of the handle. So something that's interesting is that the torque is really carried through this outer handle. The torque is not carried through this handle because this handle is only held in place with this set screw. And you'd have to really crank down the set screw to be able to use this handle. And that set screw is just not big enough for that, not really designed for that. So when I got it, the set screw was actually a tiny bit loose and allowed the handle to spin which is actually kind of nice because you might be able to just hold on to the handle, let it spin and rotate as you, as you tighten your screw. There we go, the Metmo driver is all put back together. So it's pretty cool to have a fully serviceable ratcheting screwdriver. You can't say that about most modern ratcheting screwdrivers. They're not gonna be serviceable like that. Make sure you check out some of my other videos. I have a lot of videos about engineering, taking things apart, how things are made, how things work. And stay tuned for future videos like this.